What's happening everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam and this is Van City Audi. In today's video, I'm gonna try to answer a question that a lot of you asked me in 2022. How do you effectively launch a B9? Whether it's a B9S4, a B9S5, or a B9RS5, they all use a ZF8 or a ZF8, for those Americans watching, automatic eight-speed transmission. They work a little differently than a dual clutch like you may find in my RS3, it has a true launch control feature. These cars do not. To date, I have the world's quickest, yes, you heard that correctly, the world's quickest 60 foot. So the first 60 feet when you launch the car, I've accomplished that in a 1.44. Hella quick, especially for a four-door sedan that I daily drive that weighs 36 and change. When I'm on the drag strip, it's stripped out and I have my drag radials on. So I'm gonna go through the basic setup of what I do to engage launch control to make sure your car is sitting still and not slowly creeping forward, as well as just what I pay attention to to make sure I get the most effective launch possible in my B9. So I've turned on the car and I've ensured that the car is in dynamic mode and then in sport one. Your boost gauge is located on this lower right hand side this was more important to me than my rpms when i was learning how to launch this car effectively i was paying attention to how much boost was built versus what my rpms were at now i'm not saying you have to do that but that's the way i taught myself how to launch this car more effectively when you're watching the rpms you can kind of see i want to let off at 3200 or 2800 whatever it may be but what i was doing is i was seeing how much boost was built down here versus what the rpms were showing now to deal with the traction control. Here's your button for it right here. Keep in mind that there are multiple levels. If you only hit the button once, it's gonna put it into sport mode, meaning there is a little bit of traction control still enabled. I always run with it completely off though. If you hit it again, it'll turn it back on. And then from here, you're gonna to wanna to hold it down. When you hold it down, it goes to sport mode first, then it goes to completely off. Once that says off, there is no traction control on whatsoever anymore. Car's in dynamic, car's in sport mode, car has the traction control fully turned off. With those three things, you're ready to launch the car. Now this car, like I just mentioned, has an automatic transmission versus say an RS3, which has a dual clutch. I'll use that as my comparison because I know both cars because I own both cars. The RS3's dual clutch, when you put your foot on the brake and then you put your other foot on the gas, the car doesn't physically fight you and try to accelerate. It understands that the car is in launch control, allows you to build some RPM, allows you to build some boost. Then when you take your foot off the brake, there's a hesitation and then it fires off. With this car and an automatic transmission, as soon as your right foot touches that gas pedal, it's trying to move, it's trying to accelerate. So you gotta use that quad, you gotta push your foot to the floor on the brake pedal to hold it in place. Now the one trick to all of this, and I can't take credit for this, Integrated Engineering helped me from the very beginning on this one. I told them the issue I was running into and they said, dude, just build some brake pressure first. It'll help hold your car in place. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that. And this is what I've been doing ever since day one, or not day one, week two. <laughs> ever since week two, because the first couple of weeks I was having some issues to hold my car in place once I've activated launch control. So the car is ready to launch. So what I wanna do is I wanna pump it and then to the floor, not just one single push. You're gonna wanna build up brake pressure first and then down. Sometimes I'll do that 10 to 12 times before I put my foot to the floor. So the first example of what I'm gonna show you is what the car does when I don't build up any brake pressure. Foot's to the floor. See how, <laughs> just pulled right through. This time around, I'm gonna build some brake pressure and mash them to the floor. Much, much, much better. Can build way more RPMs, way more boost before the car starts lurching forward. There you have it guys, that's how I successfully launched my B9S4 all last season on the track. I think I broke through the brakes maybe twice through the regular part of the season. At the very beginning, what's the point of YouTube if you can't make fun of yourself and others, making fun of myself, I had the exact same problem. 
I thought I screwed up everything by downgrading the brakes and that I wouldn't be able to hold all that torque back. Turns out it was just me, just that driver mod. Had to practice building up brake pressure, strengthening that quad and putting your foot through the floor before you activate launch control. I gotta make fun of the guys that I raced with as well. Jeremy from It's Pronounced Vag and Dave from Need for Built YouTube channels. I met up with both of them. I've raced with both of them. They both had the same issue. Man, my brakes, they're terrible. They can't hold my car. I said the same thing. If you can do it with these tiny brakes, I know you guys can do it with yours as well. Since then, I bet you they've both figured it out since we met up over the summer and raced. But just keep in mind to all those people out there that you feel your car lurching forward, try these few tips before you start putting the blame on the car rather than yourself. It is not a true launch control system like you find in a dual clutch. This is a torque converter and it's doing the best it can with your brakes to hold back every bit of power before you let off the brake and fly through the quarter mile. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care.